Separating two countries that are officially still at war, it's been potentially one of the most dangerous borders in the world. Now the possibility of peace could transform the villages and towns on the South Korean side of the demilitarized zone. Rim Ji Won owns five other properties around South Korea and has just joined the surge of buyers looking north, making her pick right off the map. Usually I visit the site before I make up my mind, but I was so sure about this place I didn't have to go. She now owns a piece of woodland in the village of Guangtan. Like many border communities, it has lagged behind the rest of South Korea and seems prime for development. Rim Ji Won bought her land sight unseen and then visited it later. Some people are buying plots they can't even get to without special permission. Parcels of countryside that run right up to the fence of the DMZ itself and that have largely remained undeveloped for decades. Improving relations that led to the summit between North and South Korea last month have resulted in a threefold increase in property transactions, with prices surging by up to a third. Many people expect there is a good chance that the inter-Korean summit will lead to success. There are expected to be a lot of exchanges between North and South, so land near roads and railways are in high demand. A previous summit in 2007 also saw a spike in border property prices, only to fall back again as relations soured. And as US and North Korean officials continue to meet at the truce village of Panmunjom ahead of the summit between their respective leaders, the on-again, off-again twists of the last few days are a reminder of the talk's volatility. Still, RIM remains optimistic. No, I'm not concerned, because this will remain my asset. It won't go away like a fall in the stock market. It's always going to be there. As she hopes, North-South relations are now on a permanently improved foundation. Rob McBride, Al Jazeera, Paju, near the DMZ, South Korea.